Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I'm going to paint using the Art X acrylic marker set. We uh, obtained this on Amazon. I think it was like $22, $23 USD. This contains 32 colors. It has 1.9 millimeter fine tip and 3.2 millimeter brush tips on each pen. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to be painting some HeroQuest furniture and we're going to, just like last time, paint a treasure chest and a door. Now, we painted a treasure chest and a door on the last episode of our miniature painting endeavors using these nameless eight count acrylic paint markers from five below for five dollars and they had quite large nibs uh but just this set of eight colors alone was able to color these two components and i really liked how they turned out i don't know if you'll agree but i actually really did like how they turned out i also was able to paint my sorcerer's table. And again, I don't know if you'll agree, but I do like how it turned out. There are some spots that need some uh, retouching, uh, some, some coverage that just didn't get there before. This candlestick was actually uh, colored in by my wife who has a set of metallic acrylic markers. Uh, but I wanted to explore the world of acrylic markers because I think these are a lot easier to handle for me than brushes and they're more efficient. And this has uh, actually been such a rewarding experience using these that I decided that I'm going to tackle the great challenge of painting all of my HeroQuest furniture and doors. So will this be the set that I use to do that? Let's find out. So the first thing that you get is this color swatch and it's very common if you are into colored pencils, paints, markers, anything of that variety, to get or create yourself a color swatch so that you can kind of tell at a glance what these colors are going to look like once they're on the paper, because it may vary quite a bit from what the colors on the plastic caps look like. Color tends to look different depending on what material it's placed on. So the characters of that material will definitely influence how the color appears after you've used it. Uh, but my wife went through being an experienced color swatcher and actually created new swatches above the included ones. And you can see that the colors are definitely different in some places. The uh, red wine color is far different than the sort of brown tone that they've given me. The pure red is much more saturated when it comes out of the brush tip. And these colors are, they are ever so slightly more muted in real life than they are on camera here. But this is pretty close. Pretty close. Actually, it's just the red that's more muted. So some of the red tones, the red tones are just slightly more muted. Everything else is pretty close to what you see on camera here for this color palette. The actual swatches, not the included swatches. Uh, a lot of these are similar, but some of them just have very obvious differences. Uh, apricot is one of them. The lilac is pretty close. The light pink is very close. But then like the greens, you could have told me that this was all the same green and I would have believed you. I don't really see a huge difference between the included meadow green, verdant green, and pomona green. And then down here, black, the white, and the silver, dark coffee. You've got browns. You've got some good included colors for skin tones. Uh, the light coffee brown is going to make for a pretty decent skin tone, I think. So, now, these are different than the ones I got from Five Below in that they don't have to be shaken whenever you want to use them. And they seem to be big enough to hold a lot more color. And the most important feature, there is a brush tip, which is your 3.2 millimeter. And there is a fine tip, which is your 1.9 millimeter. I think the uh, nibs on the, the five below markers were probably close to 3.2 size. But let's get to it. I'm excited. I want to color. 
Uh, this actually comes with two trays of the colors so that you can see all of the colors on the color palette that's included. And we're just as a benchmark going to go ahead and color treasure chest just like we did last time and the door. So to do that, I'm going to select colors that are fairly close to the ones that I used in the five below pack. And when I'm done, I'll accent my work with new colors. Okay, here's the color palette I'll be working with today. And so to start, I'm just immediately going to get started on the moss for the wood on the treasure chest. The one that I haven't painted yet, that would be a good idea. I'll lock that focus in for you all. And coverage, these are unprimed minis. Coverage is awesome right away. The five below markers tended to kind of pool up in places. And That was because the paint didn't have anything to stick to. This so far is doing very well with that. I do expect it to change at any moment. I'm not sure if I'm going to have every, the ability rather, to paint every single figurine with the included paint. It's not going to stop me from trying. I do have to kind of hold that down just a bit to get that to come out. That's totally fine. So I described this color palette as more um, 90s. And I stand by that. It looks like a, a color palette from a, a, a 90s toy manufacturer. This one's going to provide me with a little bit more maturity, I think. A little bit more closeness. A little more contemporary adult fantasy coloration, if that makes any sense. And um, it'll work out fine, since that is kind of the whole aesthetic of HeroQuest 2021. So I'm kind of handling this without regard for whether or not the paint actually dry. Um, I think paint in this small of an amount has dried very quickly so far. But we'll do a finger check here in a bit and determine if that's a true statement with these markers. By the way, it just feels really good to be using them. It feels good. All right, and I'm gonna put some rust on the metal. Uh, to do that, I was just going to kind of go on and off in spots, but that's that's looking too apricot. That's not quite looking like what I want. So I'm gonna go, hopefully this is a shade darker. Yeah, that's a bit darker. Um, I'm not going to only use the orange. I'm going to try to mix in some of the silver to give the impression that this chest is rusted on all of its metal hardware. And if I had some technique other than what I'm hoping will look like just natural rust due to the dankness of the dungeon, I would apply it, but I don't have any technique here. I don't have any tips on how to make this look this way. I'm just kind of firing in the dark, hoping something sticks. While you're here, I hope you decide to subscribe, like the video, 
I don't really care if you hit the notification bell, that's something that you decide to do if you want to be notified, things like that. Subscribe if you like to see this sort of content. I'm thinking about making painting a regular occurrence. It's not going to become a painting channel, but this does tie in with my creation of game-related and fantasy-related things. All right. I think those were the only two colors that I really put on here. We will supplement this with some silver. It's really more of a gray. It's not metallic in any way. The front of this is metallic, which was not a color included with the five below markers. It's something my wife had. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this guy silver motif. I'm actually just going to try to cover him. This paint is um, really nice, too. It's not pooling up anywhere yet. It covers well. It's thin. Oh, I spoke too soon. I'm getting a little bit of pooling. Yep, a little bit of pooling. see that it, it pulled away right there paint just pulled right away okay that's okay I'm asking a lot of it already by doing this little experiment it doesn't surprise me that it's hesitant um, anyways I do a lot of mixed gaming content here on the channel a lot of it has to do with video games created in engines. Occasionally I branch out the gaming content, but it will always be returning to fantasy. And principles of making games. Whether you are homebrewing, using a tabletop RPG system, or a video game engine, some sort of hybrid. There will be other things, of course. I really want this to look like gross, rusted metal. Since I know that the silver or the gray, whoops, whoops. I'll just go back over that, it is the color of the metal. I probably should have went over all of the metal hardware first with the gray. There's that lack of technique showing itself. But you can scream at me what you think I should have done, and I will, I will take critique. I will take any advice I can get. Because this is something I could do for a while. This is this is very relaxing and fun. Okay. I think I would like to make this green a little bit more danker in spots. Mmm. Big maybe. Big, maybe. Rather get a teal in here if I can help it. There we go. That's that color. That's that color I was looking for. That's the teal. Kind of decided early on that I wasn't going to do that, though, didn't I? Let's grab a brown. And fix. Whoops, this gray spattering. Oh yeah. Oh that that's 
marvelous. That's lovely. You can't even tell. You cannot even tell. All right, I think as far as chests go, might actually continue with that. I, I might stop there. It uh, it looks suitably kind of gross. And we can take our metallic markers and go over this a little bit and get some accents on it going. I didn't do a whole lot to it, though. But I don't think I really have to do a whole lot to the chest. Kind of wanted to do, like, a blood stains on it or something, but I know I need to edit myself now and not go too far. I'm really not going to like how it turns out. Okay, for the door, we're going to do something completely different. I'm not even going to worry about making it look like the other door. We'll do a comparison afterwards because the doors are very... There's so many of them that I'm, I'm probably going to just have a wide variety of doors. I kind of thought about this. There's not really enough doors to do it, but what if you could take a door and color both sides to match the rooms that it's linking between? So like on the hero quest board, you've got some yellow tiles in a room and you've got some green tiles in an adjacent room. What if one side of the door was green and the other side was yellow? And it was just unmistakable that that's where that door was placed. It would be a bit tedious, maybe, but I think it would draw a couple of components in that just could not be drawn together otherwise. It would be pretty, pretty easy to do. But yeah, the, the combinations of doors to corridor and so on, I don't, I don't think we have enough doors to actually do that. You'd have to make color combinations for every possible two rooms or room and corridor combination that existed. The darker brown definitely looks nicer, but I'm pretty certain, yeah, the darker brown is from my from my wife's set, so can't really fairly compare that. Now, I did want to get the bottom of the door kind of crazy. I can see on my camera spots that I've missed, but it's hard to see those in real life. I'm going to color this side of the door, but I, I want to put a blood stain. I really want some blood on some of these components. You know? Some, some violence has taken place in Zargon's dungeons. That needs to be evident. I tried to make this a stream too, guys. If you'd be interested in that sort of thing, where you can kind of all interact with me while I'm doing this and give me tips live, and we can talk about what kind of colors we can paint stuff, I will paint my entire Hero Quest set on stream. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. If you've come this far, comment, please. I don't like asking for comments and stuff. That, that sort of thing is just helpful because of the algorithm. The more a video gets interacted with, the higher it will place when put up against videos of like theme, videos that use the same tags, videos that use similar thumbnails placed in similar categories. And so commenting anything at all down below, even just saying, K, okay, that helps apparently a lot. That means when somebody's looking for painting videos or hero quest videos, this will, this will appear just a few notches higher. And I think if I can get in front of more people, substantially more, I think the channel can really 
go places that I'd love for it to go. So this is not my day job. This is just my dream job. We have both Whoa! <sighs> Don't drop your door. We have both sides of our door painted pretty thoroughly, I think. Pretty thoroughly. Just the wooden part. We're going to do the hardware now. It'll be too dark. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a light gray for the hardware. What a coincidence! It's gonna make it look a lot like the other door. This is kind of a situation where some of the paint is pooling as well. And I think it's because there's just so much coming out at once. Crap. I'll have to correct that. Some folks have told me that they like to put on my channel and watch it before breakfast, before work, things of that nature. That's really cool, guys. I'm flattered. I'm flattered that you would watch my channel at all, let alone, let alone before your morning routine or as part of your morning routine. I mean... Those are some high caliber compliments to me. That's the nib. We don't want that. We want the tiny fine brush tip. We're going to just go over where we've already been. That color gets filled in a lot more. Ends up looking really good. Maybe, kind of. Fill that in. I need to do the top one too. Actually, the top one looks better on camera. And now that the bottom one is all done, the, the bottom one doesn't look as good on camera or in real life. So I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Alright, blood. Blood time. We need blood. Blood. Pretty dark very soon after it spills. And I know this because I have cleaned a substantial amount of blood from floors. I am a first aid provider at my job. Not to, not to brag, it's, it, it can be a real pain. <clears throat> not like a dramatic amount, but like uh, somebody cut themselves on something and they decided to go to the bathroom to clean themselves up, and they bled the whole way there. So we've got droplets of blood on the floor all the way to the bathroom, the sink. And yours truly gets to clean that up. This red's showing up fairly darker when I put it, pull it away, and then up here it, it kind of comes off bright. I don't think I have a darker red than that, though. I don't... I don't think I have a truer red. No, it doesn't seem like I do. But I'll probably leave that there because it's pretty obvious, you know, what that's supposed to be. The uh, orc guards were drinking tomato juice and spilled it all over the door, right? So that's is that the fine tip. This is the brush tip. This is what we want. Not having to stop and reload your brush and all of that. That really makes for an easier time. So I'm going to make the handle red. And I'm going to just trickle the blood down. Indicating that a hero tried to escape. Got to the handle. Uh, 
who knows what their fate truly was before they were uh, either able or unable to get through the door. I'd like to just make blood splatters. Kind of, kind of coming off obsessed with blood. I, I better, I better cool it. I better cool my jets. Let's go to the green color in this moss on the side. There's a lot of it, and to be honest, it's it's not entirely clear where some of this ends and where some of the cobblestone begins. So I'm just gonna wing it, thinking WWWD, what would Wylock do? And I think, be like, you know, I don't have the time to worry about it. So we'll we'll go with that logic. It feels so much more natural holding this than it does a brush anyways. It just facilitates speed and confidence and efficiency. To me, that's what it feels like to me. To you, it might feel like a madman is completely borking up his figurines by painting them very poorly. And I can I can see that. I can understand that. Again, this is the Art X kit. A R R T X. They have a lot of product on Amazon. This was like $22, $23 USD. And provides a very decent amount of color palette. And the uh, dual nibbed pens are very versatile. They're letting you get into those fine details, cracks and areas. I'm gonna do that. I'm actually going to use the white as if this is a skull. I don't really know that I see it as a skull, but these weird little chaotic faces that are all around the set, they don't really strike me as like distinguishable. They're not like super, oh, that's a familiar. I know what that is. So I'm just gonna be liberal in my interpretation of what they are, because I really don't care what they are. Savage, maybe. Uh, it doesn't really look great, but I, I think it didn't look great before or after, so it's just, it's just going to eternally be a pain in the butt. So, yeah. Here's my door so far trying to think about what else I'd like to do to it. I think I'd like to color in some of these cobblestones, which they're not really going to want to be colored in. I think this is the black, isn't it? I don't want the black. I would say that I wanted the darker gray, but there's not really a dark gray. I thought that was a muted sort of gray with bluish tones, but it actually is very blue. 
That's what I get for not using my palette, my swatch. So what if I could paint just every other stone? Looks like I got a little bit of that blue on my brush tip. That's not great, but it's coming off and it's kind of it's kind of bringing in the new paint with it for an interesting effect. That's not something I'm going to do on purpose ever, but it's sort of blended. It's just sort of blended things. Interesting. Can't say I like it. Can't say I want to do that again, but it's done something. Did you guys check out the interview that I did with Home of Hero Quest fans over on Twitch? You'll find XSC Home of Hero Quest fans on Twitch and follow him. You'll see a video where he interviewed me. And we played a short game of Hero Quest. We played a bit of an arena battle, homebrew scenario to be continued. I want to say very soon, very soon it will be continued. You know what? I'm going to go over this entire floor. Go over the entire floor with my marker tip. And I'll come back with that brush. Actually, we might be developing a bit of a technique. Look at that. It um it's sort of looks like crap. Actually, well, at first, though, before it started to hesitate and pull away, it looked textured. It looked suitably textured for what I'm going for. Like, if we just take this and wipe it really fast across the wall, it'll skip all of the cracks and kind of give it that cobblestone look. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think I'm going to keep that idea. I think we're going to roll with that. And it's actually affected the bottom to great success. In my opinion. Sorry for getting out of view of the camera. I'm going to try to get really a lot better at that. Hopefully I haven't really been doing it that much. I'm also trying to make sure this thing stays in focus because it's not really trying. Which is so weird. We have to lock the focus sometimes. Yeah, okay, so I naturally found a technique. Just really fast across the bumpy surface. Here's before. And then. There's after. I like that. I like that a lot more than the random shaded stones. Wirelock's got an excellent tutorial on how to treat cobblestone. Things like cobblestone, but it's not something that I've watched. I have watched it actually, yes, but I don't think it can apply to this scenario or else I just can't remember exactly what it was. It's part of a greater video on on a build of a specific dungeon Dungeons and Dragons dungeon I believe and there were a lot of painting tips in the video 
uh, with every step of the build. And I'm just not sure what video that was or where in that video that was. I'm gonna call that done. It's a bit tacky. Um, the paint's gotta dry, obviously. This, this door does not feel tacky. This feels fine. It dried a while back. I don't feel like I like it's totally necessary to put sealant on here. Anything to seal the paint in. The colors are pretty similar. So if you decided that, you know, those eight colors from five below is all you wanted for your projects, you could get away with that. It would be just fine. It would be just fine. Just like all things art and homebrew creation, you don't have to let lack of funds get in your way. You can get a lot of the stuff on the cheap and the quality isn't necessarily bad or good. You just got to attune to its usage as part of your tool set and um, apply a little technique. And the hardware doesn't look like it was even painted at all on the left side. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, relaxing, and I will see you tomorrow. Again, if you'd like to see more like this, or you'd like to give me some tips, I'll take that stuff seriously. Oh, before I forget, Kordak Hunter had commented in my video on this treasure find. Uh, the first person to comment will have their name placed here. Uh, but you have to watch this far into the video, and so I must ask that you say something very particular. If you've made it this far, please mention something about the moon. And I will place your handle right here on this board just as a little fun thing to show off in the next video that I do. Might be a painting video, might be a playthrough video, we'll see. But for now, I'm out of time, so I'm going to leave this video here. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you learned something about these colors or marker pens, acrylic marker pens in general. And I'll see you tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Bye for now. Not not really a whole lot of paint. We've got some paint, but not really not really a whole lot. Look at that. I have to use my hand to focus my hand.